you guys are crooked, or is it me that's crooked? Maybe I should list. To, which which way would I list to make you straight? <laughs> it's funny, Maxi. Usually you can see him in the background. He's the black dog, the medium-sized black dog. He's in there. He's got a got a crate. He's crate trained, and he sleeps in there at night. And about nine o'clock or so, he's like, "I am ready for bed. I want to go in my cage and sleep." <laughs> So he just has, you know, he prefers a treat to get him in the cage because he doesn't get treats. That's the only time he gets a little treat. And it's one of those greenies that cleans their teeth anyway. So it's really, you know, a good thing. But he's ready for bed and you just put him in bed and cover him up with a blanket, the outside. He's got a blanket inside and then I cover him up on the outside with a blanket and he'll just sleep from nine or so till like seven or so in the morning. Just zonks out. Um, and Bella, she's decided, I don't know, the first night she slept in bed with Kathy, my roommate. And the next night she slept in my room on my fuzzy gray rug. And then last couple nights she's kind of slept in her bed and she'll sleep in my bedroom a little bit. And then she'll get up and eat and she just kind of, kind of wanders around and does stuff at night. And so... This is going to be a, I got totally off subject. Usually you're supposed to say what you're gonna do at the very beginning and I didn't do that. <laughs> um, I'm gonna tell you a story. You guys like, said you like my stories and you like to hear about Japan. So we got married when I was 18 and he was 20. And because he was going to Japan and then I couldn't join him immediately. So I got this lady bitty apartment like a little studio apartment and worked at a Sir George's smorgasbord it was called and I was a waitress there and you since it was a you know buffet kind of place you just served drinks and desserts and uh, I worked there for like three months till he could get there get settled get arranged for me to come out there and because he wasn't a high enough rank we didn't get on base housing we lived in off base housing so I'm going to tell you about our different housing we had while we, we were there. The first place we lived was a Japanese style apartment. And it was itty bitty apartment. It, um, it had no bedroom. It had what's called tatami mats. So these rice mats on the floor, no carpet or tile or anything like that. Tatami mats on the floor. And then we had this thing, it's a futon, but not the kind you're thinking of with the, where it looks like a couch. This was, it was jointed in two places. So it folded into thirds and it was about a foam mattress about this thick that folded up and then you could put it against the wall and kind of use it like a couch or whatever. And then on top of that went this, it looks like a quilt, but it was really thick and heavy, very heavy. And you put that, you fold it out the futon thing, and then you put this heavy quilty thing on top of it, and then your whatever sheets, blankets, whatever you wanted. And that's what we slept on, and then you'd pick it up and, you know, it folded up. The, the futon part was jointed in three places or two places, so it folded into the thirds, and you kind of put it out of the way and made it be sort of your couch. So your living room was your bed and your living room. <laughs> So we had the living room and then we had a little bitty kitchen and then a bathroom and that was it. And the bathroom, they, it had a drain in the floor because the Japanese think it's dirty to get into and soak in a tub when you're not clean. So they had like, like, like a gourd with a handle kind of and you scooped out and you poured the warm water on you and you soaked all up and then you rinsed off and got all clean and then you'd soak in the tub. And the tub was, it was great. It wasn't big. I mean, it would have been nice if you could spread out, but it was probably three foot cube. So you kind of sat with your knees up, but it had a, um, like a thick rubber top that you put over it to keep the heat in while you're heating it up. And it had a flame thing that went underneath it. So you could leave that on low and it would stay warm like forever. I mean, you heat it, you put it on high to heat it up. And then if you just wanted to soak like a hot tub almost, you'd just turn the flame down and you'd be sitting in there 
knees up to your chest, just and the water's up to your neck because it's three feet deep, you know. So you just chill it in there, nice and nice and warm. So uh, that was great. It would have been nice if it was more hot tub size, but you know we're talking. 68 to 72 was when I was there. So hot tubs weren't a big thing other than maybe in California back in those days. And the toilet itself was, they don't, <clears throat> they don't sit on the toilet. The part that we would sit on is even with the ground and the bowl parts underneath the ground. So you would kind of squat down over it. You would not sit on it. And you haven't lived till you've been like 10 months pregnant because I was a month late out in public at one of those Japanese toilets and you're like this, trying to get your sit way back up in the stall. <laughs> Cause it was, and most of their toilets, public toilets are unisex. So you've got the stalls, but you've also got the urinals on the wall. So it's not a whole lot of, I mean, there were doors to the stalls, most of them, not always, but uh, yeah. And they did have, like hotels would have like a hot tub type soaking tub too. And one time there's a there's an ice festival up in Northern Japan, in Sapporo. And it's a, like a famous ice festival. And so we went up there, at the, we were like more Southern, mid to, mid, more mid-ish, but a little bit more Southern Japan near Tokyo. And we were there during the World's Fair, so we got to go down to Southern Japan to the World's Fair too. But at this this hotel we stayed at, it was winter because of the ice festival, of course. So we had this window and we'd open the window and there was like a little spot, like a window box thing. And you could put your beer or your drinks or whatever out there to keep them cool because <laughs> they didn't have like in room refrigerators or whatever. So we saw the hot tub, so we thought, well, let's go down and soak in the hot tub because it was downstairs, like in what you would kind of be the, like the lobby kind of. So we get down there and I've got, of course, got a suit on and he's got a suit on and we've got towels and stuff. And so we get down there and there were several Japanese gentlemen down there and they're very gentlemanly. So they stood up to bow to welcome us. And I was like, they were all naked in there. <laughs> I was, and I'm like 18, 19 years old. I was so embarrassed. I'm like, oh, let's come back later. <laughs> I'm not sitting in, sitting in this hot tub with these naked strangers. But that's just their culture, you know? They're just not, I don't know if it's still that way. Of course, we're talking years and years and years ago. So anyway, back to our first apartment. Uh, so we had the, the, the little living room where we slept on the, the futon and then the, the bathroom with the, toilet and the tub and all that and then there was an itty bitty kitchen like one little maybe three foot counter a little little bitty oven like about that big that had one temperature I mean whatever it was it's was probably 450 or something it was pretty high temperature so I was like at the time when we first got there I was probably one of the few wives of the the NCO guys, the non-commissioned officers, just the regular grunt guys. This was Air Force. Um, and uh, so I would, like Christmas time, I decided I'd bake a bunch of cookies for the guys. And oh man, was that a nightmare because that thing had just the one temperature and it was a high temperature and you only held one little bitty, maybe a half size cookie sheet. And there was like maybe 20 guys. So I'm making these <coughs> stupid cookies for ever, you know, and you'd have to sit right there and take them out real quick so they didn't burn and I burned half of them and that was a nightmare. <laughs> but they wouldn't have said anything. They were so sweet. One time we had some of them over and I had never made, I mean, I grew up with the kind of whipped cream, you know, and they didn't have that there. So I made some gingerbread for d dessert. I made a lot of times I'd invite the guys over and I would make um, bean and ham hock soup because it was cheap and cornbread. I could feed like a whole ton of guys for a couple bucks, you know, because a bag of beans is nothing, some onions and onions and celery, and then ham hocks, and then combined was probably two bucks to make a big old pot of bean soup. 
And then I made some, some um, gingerbread and I bought some cream to make, cool, you know, whipped cream. And I'd never done it before. I didn't know. So I make the whipped cream and serve it and they put it on their, ginger, their gingerbread and nobody says a word. And they're just eating their gingerbread, not saying nothing. And then I taste mine, and I didn't know you had to put sugar in the, in the whipped cream. It was terrible, but those guys were so sweet. They didn't say a word. They just ate it anyway. <laughs> yeah, so we lived there at the time when we first got there. I can't remember exactly, but he made maybe $108 a month. And then we got what's called, you know, um, I forget what it was called, but you got extra money because we were overseas and because I was there. So we got another 90 something dollars. So we lived on $200 a month. <laughs> and this little apartment we had at the time, it was 3,600 yen, which was around a hundred dollars. Now it's the yen to dollars like way different. But back then it was, I think it was, you know, 360 yen to the dollar or something like that back back in the day. And so after eventually, it started being more married people come and we still couldn't get on, well, we did get offered on-base housing at this one place that was away from the base and it was this huge, like just giant apartment complex. But I didn't want to go there because it was away from town and I'd heard all these stories had what they called key parties. I don't know if you know what that is, but it was something I didn't want to be around or part of. They would have a party and everybody throw their house keys in a bowl and then draw them out and then you'd go home with that person that night to get my drift. So I wasn't gonna go down that road. So we decided we just wanted to keep living off base, but we found this little court that was American style houses, but they were right by the, within walking distance of the base. So we moved in there and then eventually we got to know everybody else. And they were all like similar, you know, young couples where the wife had come over and, you know, so there got to be more couple friends that we had. And this first house we got, it had like wood, this is 70s, late 60s, early 70s was, that's the way it would, wood paneling all over the whole house. And we had this big, it was like a 50 gallon barrel that had a switch you'd turn and kerosene would pour in the bottom and you'd light a match and, whoosh, and it would just burn this kerosene and that's how you heated it. But this was so gross, whoever had lived there was a major smoker and the bedroom, there were, they actually had two bedrooms, two or three bedrooms, I think two. And not the master bedroom that we were in so much, but must have been another guy in the back bedroom. And the, I had to throw the curtains away. They were just so saturated with tobacco. And I used a scrub brush and cleanser. And I just kept getting this brown stuff off of the walls for like weeks. It was so saturated from cigarette smoke. It was so disgusting. And I'm kind of allergic to cigarette smoke, so well, that was But we had a lot of fun in that court. I mean, the other people that he worked with ended up living there too. And we'd get together and we'd play pinochle. You hear me now talk about playing pinochle sometimes. We'd get together and play pinochle. And eventually we moved, we were there like a back one and we moved kitty corner to a front one that was a nicer, bigger house. But it was in the same old court and they just played tricks on each other. Like we had this little bitty Japanese cars, some of them did and all the guys got out early one morning and they put this guy's car, they like built a brick wall or there was a brick wall, maybe that was it. And they lifted it up and put this car on top of this brick wall. So when he comes out to go to work, in the morning, there's this car sitting on top of the wall. So, and then we lived there in that court until we came home four years later. I have more stories about Japan, but this was the accommodations version of where, you know, where we lived and what it was like in Japan. And I, I'll have more stories because you all said you liked my stories, particularly about Japan. So there'll be more coming to a screen near you. 
if you enjoy chit chat, which is me, I also do unboxings. I'm going to try and do a little more crafting stuff, cooking stuff. I'm trying to expand because I'm not growing and I'd like to grow. So trying to find what gets the most views, you know, I do, I do a lot of giveaways. I do collabs. I got a collab coming up in early early August. I'm also going on a cruise, so in early August there'll also be a bunch of video cruise, Alaska cruise videos. So come back. Join us. Join our happy little family. Love to have you. Talk to y'all real soon. Love y'all. Bye-bye.